get ready for dictation start mr deputy speaker sir i rise to support the demands for grants of the ministry of defense sir the armed forces of india deserve the gratitude of the whole nation for carrying out a magnificent job ever since independence the primary responsibility of the armed forces is to keep the borders of the country inviolate a part from this the armed forces have been employed in numerous other tasks such as in the aid of civil power going to the rescue of neighboring countries anti terrorism and helping civilian population in fighting natural calamity all these multifarious duties have been carried out by the three services with extreme courage devotion to duty and self sacrifice stop para the indian army in particular have proved themselves second to none time and time again the operation carried out in maldives a couple of years back showed planning and execution of the highest order in fact it was reminiscent of the much publicized and highly praised action undertaken by israeli armed forces in the recent operations of the ipkf in sri lanka the officers and jawans not only showed exemplary bravery and courage but tackled a difficult situation in a most tactful manner stop para it will not be out of place to mention that the tendency to use the armed forces too frequently in aid of civil power should be strictly checked at present our armed forces are totally political but too much involvement in anti terrorist activities and in the aid of civil power will tend to politicize the army and its main task of defending the integrity of the country will suffer adversely i am sure the prime minister and the defense minister will agree that the task of maintaining law and order should be carried out either by the local police or by the paramilitary forces the army should only be called out as a last resort and that too as far as possible only for carrying out flag marches as a show of strength to restore confidence and morale of the civilian population as a rule the army should never get entangled in street fighting against our own citizens as has happened in the past sometimes stop para sir the scenario of power balance in the world is undergoing a rapid 
transformation with the reduction of armaments both in the western and eastern blocs the arms race between the superpowers appears to have come to an end the major military pacts like the nato and the warsaw have been rendered redundant there is no gain saying the fact that pandit jawaharlal nehru was the founder of non alignment movement and that india's policy of non alignment stands fully vindicated however new alignments are bound to take place the multinational giants manufacturing armaments will create lobbies and use pressures to find new markets for their lethal merchandise india will have to remain doubly alert to ensure that the power balance in southeast asia does not shift to our detriment in this context our planners will have to take a hard look at our nuclear policy although india is committed to the principles of panchshil and our peace loving intentions are well known still we must have adequate deterrent to safeguard peace in south east asia it is now almost confirmed that pakistan has developed a nuclear capacity although they still lack a delivery system but this is a matter of grave concern in these circumstances i am of the considered opinion that we should go in for a nuclear option india is now a mature democracy and our leaders should be able to convince the world opinion that the possession of a nuclear deterrent by india will be the surest way of ensuring lasting peace in this region stop para i will now take a few other points the first one is about the situation in jammu and kashmir and punjab successive governments have been trying to tackle this situation but i am sorry to say with a little success the crux of the problem lies in the training camps for these terrorists established in pakistan unless we can dismantle those training camps this problem will remain i have some experience in the army and in intelligence services in the army and i think the old adage that attack is the best means of defense still holds good i would say the best way for india to stop pakistan from training these terrorists and sending them into india is to start training afghans pukhtuns and mujahideens of karachi and infiltrate them there so that pakistan realizes what it is to create trouble in another country 
स्टॉप पैरा आई वुड लाइक टू से ए फ्यू वर्ड्स अबाउट एलोकेशन ऑफ फंड्स आर एंड डी इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज फार एज आर्म्ड फोर्सिस आर कंसर्नड एंड आई थिंक इट इज इम्पेरेटिव फॉर एस टू इनडिगनाइज द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ हैवी आर्मेंट्स कंबाट एयरक्राफ्ट एंड फाइटिंग शिप्स फॉर अवर नेवी वी हैव बीन हेयरिंग ऑफ द मेन बैटल टैंक्स एंड द लाइट कंबैट एयरक्राफ्ट फॉर द लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स स्टॉप पैरा माई नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज डैट द परसेंटेज ऑफ डिफेंस एक्सपेंडिचर एज कंपेयर्ड टू द टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर हैज बीन स्टेडली गोइंग डाउन सिंस नाइनटीन एटी सेवन वाइल डैट ऑफ पाकिस्तान हैज बीन स्टेडली गोइंग अप एंड द साइज एंड आर्मेंट्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान आर्मी नेवी एंड एयरफोर्स हैव almost doubled in the last 2 or 3 years stop para i agree that our financial position as has been brought out by the finance minister and the prime minister is not very happy but can we afford to be lax in the allotment for the security of our country when our neighbors china and pakistan are building up very rapidly i would request the defense minister the finance minister and the prime minister to pay particular attention to this and to see that our army and its two sister services the navy and the air force are not run down under any circumstances and are given proper allocation of funds 